25 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. It goes from now until midnight Eastern time. And here we are. Look at us. Aren't we beautiful? Aren't we gorgeous? Isn't he lovely? Oh, well, anyway. Uh, hey, you know what's uh, time to do? It's time to go check in with uh, somebody who we used to be married to, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, showtime. Yes, showtime. <laughs> Here's Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. She of uh, Lake Oswego. Move yourself over just a little bit because I to have which my... To side? To the... Let's see here. To your right side. Just There we go. Fine. Good. Because you were bumping into my picture. Oh, hey, we can't have that. We can't have that, you know. No, 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 no. Do, are you wearing that hat because it's your birth year? Uh, Yes. Okay. okay we, <laughs> Making sure everyone well, can why, see it. Why else would I? You know why, when I was born. <laughs> what is that word up there at the top? Put your head down. Well, it says limited uh, something. Limited edition, 1939. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there probably weren't a lot of babies in 1939. I, I also have a T-shirt. The same thing? Different. I think it says, oh, maybe it says limited That's the edition. world know how old you are. Well, I, you know, I was on Amazon for some reason, knows how old I am. And so all of a sudden I say, oh, "You oh, really isn't that funny? They 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 put up an ad for this you, for you. You might be interested in these T-shirts." And <laughs> I went, "Fuck yes, I'm interested in that." I buy a lot on Amazon. They've never done that for me. Oh, they will. Don't worry, you're just not old <laughs> enough. You got to realize, another month, I'm going to be eighty. <sighs> yeah, that's a big that's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. Uh, at the rate I'm going, I may not make it, you know, but uh, I just... Uh, please, please. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm, ti you know, I'm tired of the whole, you know. I, I never I never thought my uh, my genitals would get even with me. <laughs> you, know, so. you might want to explain that further. <laughs> Damn this penis, you know. Uh, but then again, you've got your whole set of cancers, and I won't even get into I yours. Have, no, I have a cancer, and I have COPD. You want to know Two something? Big deal. They you are big deals, something? and I'm really working hard to balance what they each require. Today, especially. But today, I'm having a really, really good day. You're, this, if I you're really. Busy, it would be a great day. You are. You are today. Uh, you don't look like there's anything wrong with you. Well, and it doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with me. Unless I try to walk too fast, then I'm, I'm well aware of something wrong with me. I'm okay today. Yeah. Maybe maybe the doctors are wrong. Maybe they are. <laughs> you know. You never know. Um, you know, did I tell you? I must have told you that the CT scan two weeks ago, that the cancer's on my, in my lung. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only grown a little more than a centimeter. Mm-hmm. Well, and there are no new ones. So what does that mean? It just well, there? it means it's growing because that's what cancers do. Hmm. It's their job, um, but very, very slowly, and which is really something with pancreatic cancer. And uh, so, you know, so I feel good. And the, the the bigger problem in terms of day to day is COPD, and I go to rehab twice a week, and they're teaching me how to deal with that. So I feel pretty good. Yeah. No, you look you look spectacular, actually, and you're peppy and zippy and snarly. Oh, that's and... just because there's a lot of uh, caffeine in me this morning. Oh, I really? was really busy uh, today. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, but uh, 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 so uh, you know, it looks like uh, maybe you know, uh, certainly your your health is in a way. That it's it's not progressing too fast. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's really... progressing, but it's very very slow. And in fact, when I was still doing chemo, the doctor, the oncologist, wanted to do scans to check how it's growing or not. 
uh, every two months. He was doing so well, he said, let's expand it to three. And it had been this last week, three months since my last one. And this one, he said to me, I think we could go six months till your next scan. <laughs> to well, which I said, I will do three months. <laughs> I yeah, want to know what's happening. But that's that's amazing, you know? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just, I mean, I, I'm kind of humbled and well, well aware that I'm a, the people of the Whipple surgery for pancreatic cancer, 90% of them, a huge percent, forget my number, uh, don't make it a year. I have gone a year and a half now since the surgery, and I'm really humbled by that. It just doesn't happen. And the reason you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, um, you know, talks about her pancreatic cancer from 20 years ago is they caught it extremely early. Um, and that was, they weren't there for that. They were there doing something else and happened to stumble across it. Um, in my case, they knew what it was up front. And I just, I'm just, you know, I've never been the kind of lucky person that wins contests or the but lottery you won or this one. like that. If you're going to win anything, this is the thing to win, I think. Don't you? Well, the fact <laughs> that you were even capable or, or uh, had the ability to have that operation when only 10% of the people can yes. Yes. put you in a in an interesting category. And then to survive the Whipple surgery, you say people only survive how long after the Whipple? I'm not sure, but I think it's about a year. And that's what I'm counting anyway. I haven't done, I, I've forgotten for sure and I haven't done the homework, but, um, but call, let's call it close enough. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, if you're going to win anything, if you're never, ever going to win any contest in this life. This is the one to win. Finally, at this age, win this, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's terrific. You know, I mean, what can we say? I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's marvelous. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting that, you know, I, I used to think that all cancers were alike. But they're mm -hmm. not. Yeah, they, well, until you get there, I think most of us do. You yeah, know? they're not. I mean... Uh, in the case of pancreas, and in, in the case of prostate cancer, it's so different that if it even spreads to the rest of your body, they can slow it down using uh, 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 depleting you of your testosterone. And, and that keeps it from growing? From growing all, anywhere else in the body because it's all prostate cancers that are going out there and spreading. Oh, and they don't attach themselves to other places. Well, they go other places, but once they're but there. That's why I'm saying they don't attach themselves well, in other places. Well, supposedly once they're there, you can use these these, these female hormones. Uh, that, uh, when they rob you of testosterone, they're really giving you female hormones. In fact, people who, who have these hormone shots start getting hot flashes and things like that. <laughs> And they're probably all 80, right? <laughs> yeah. And most, uh, but something like 98% of prostate cancers are localized to the prostate, in which case they're easily either taken care of by hormones or, or radiation. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it if caught early, it's extremely survivable. And what's amazing about pancreatic is that the problem with pancreatic cancer is they don't really find it till it's late. Right. You know, and the fact that she found it early and why can't they create just spend all their money to find a test to catch it early? You I want know? to tell you something that happened to me that's interesting about that. I knew something was terribly wrong with me, but six months before they found it. And I had a different doctor then and he spent about seven minutes with me and told me I probably had a flu. And that's when I fired him. Um, and then I tracked down and I had this new doctor and all these people at OHSU. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know either. And one of the reasons is that it's compared to most other cancers. Pancreatic cancer is so rare, a lot of doctors haven't ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And so... And, and nobody has the same symptoms. You have a wide variety of symptoms jumbled up and different in every person. But here's something that I didn't get from that first doctor, is that if you have urine that you have described as neon orange that glows in the dark, wouldn't you think that's a big alert to somebody? Neon, what's neon orange in the dark? 
What? What's neon orange? I just said urine. Oh, your urine. I didn't hear the word yeah. urine. I mean, it could light up the bathroom. Wouldn't you think that that's a real, I mean, it's not, I don't know that it's necessarily an indicator of pancreatic cancer, but it seems to me it's something that would make a doctor sit up and pay attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, neon pee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, didn't, it didn't glow in the dark, though, did it? No, but it, <laughs> but it was so bright, it seemed like it could. Really, you know. really. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm I will am for the next probably the next two weeks peeing blood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, probably more than anybody wanted to know. It's really really wonderful all these things. But anyway, you know, so I I think you're you know I'm I you're you're certainly in much better shape than I expected you to be at this point. Okay. Oh, me too. You know. <laughs> me too. And and my my probably I'll hear but uh, you'll disappear and I won't hear from you and then I'll find out you got run over by a car. Right. You know? I, mean, exactly. it's, you know. It, it, I mean it, it's you know I'm up and awake I when we talk on 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 the Skype thing but um I'm tired a lot a lot more tired yeah. than I used to be. And so I rest a lot and spend quiet time alone a lot mm -hmm. because that's what I need to renew. And uh, so it's not, I can't say it's like it was before I had cancer, but it's um, its nothing like what I expected and quite happily so. Well, nothing. you've also adapted to a new normal. Well, you, you I'm know. fine. I mean, that's a nice little cliche, but yeah. um, it... Uh, I mean, it, that doesn't say anything about what it is, so it, it's not useful. But yeah, um, it, it it it's well, never mind. You yeah, know, yeah. I don't know what no, to say. You're, you're, but I'm so happy to see that you're. Every time I uh, call you, I don't know what to, what I'm going to get. And every time lately, I get somebody who looks better and better. <laughs> yeah, and right. Better. Pretty soon there'll be this little girl barely yeah. getting her head up over the desk, right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know. Um, so, uh, Have you been watching the impeachment hearings? Yes, I, I watched today. Um, y you know, I find them hard to watch. Tell me your impression of Sondland. Well, I think, number one, he's a guy who's gotten dragged into something that he never expected he would get dragged into. I mean, he's not a, I don't think he's a public person, okay? He's a guy who had a lot of money. Oh, and he's loving every minute of it. Just no, look no, at him. He he's get, just he gave Trump give me more, honey. He gave Trump <laughs> uh, a million dollars and got an ambassadorship. You know, whatever. Uh, and uh, I, but I don't think he expected this to happen. You know, I'm sure he likes the attention. Oh, he loves it. I mean, just yeah. look at him. He's yeah. loving every second of yeah. it. Uh, well, what do you think of the guy? I think that he's lying. He continues to lie. Who? You can look at him and you can tell when he speaks he's lying. I What's mean, he lying about, though? What? I would have to go back and make notes. And like him, I don't keep notes on, on what I'm watching on TV. I mean, wouldn't you like to believe uh, everything he but you, said? I, it's the manner in which he says things, the certain things he repeats in the same speech, um, the odd laughs uh, in odd places, and nobody laughs with him. Um, I just think that you know, I think that the overall scope of what he's saying of I talked to so and so, whatever whichever so and so yeah. he's speaking of, I think that those are all true things. I think that what they said and how they said it, I don't believe him for a minute unless it unless it it makes him look good. Then he does then he's not lying. Yeah, but but uh you know, a lot of what he said was kind of damning of Trump. I mean, of, of just the people, of Trump and don't the people around Don't you think that was the point? Yeah, well, I mean, don't we, I mean, we as people who don't like Trump would like him to believe what he says, you know, uh, but. I'm not saying, well, yeah. you know, it's complicated. Um, I think that he riffed a lot on stuff that he doesn't have anything to back him up. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? And about I think that if you had all the facts, if I were one of the people on the staff who was required to have what facts we've got yeah. and was watching today, um, you could be specific about that. 
Um, but generally, he did a lot of riffing on without telling us anything. Yeah. What did What did you think about the uh, who's uh, the military guy? They had a couple of days. Oh, ago. don't you just love him? I mean, somebody yeah. who loves the country as much as he does, and is proud of being an American, and absolutely, who knows how? I mean, was a yeah. baby, a, a toddler when he got here, so. Uh, it's not like he brought other beliefs, uh, you know, political beliefs with him, but he bought the American dream and the American ideal, and he has lived it. You know absolutely everything that he says is true. I mean, you just... And, and, what he, and, what, and, and, and we live in such a cynical world, and he is not a cynic about America. Right. And I just love that about him. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's his belief in America that made him so upset by the things yeah. he heard. Yes. You know. Um, I just love it, though. you got these Republicans who consider themselves great patriots, and yet somebody like this comes in and they try and treat him like shit. Yeah. You know? Uh, and, and you know what? Did you see? I mean, did you see his face when the Republicans were saying such, not quite such nice things about him? He just... He, he just knew he is so sure of himself and his own truthfulness and his own beliefs yeah. that it just it just goes off of him like water off a duck. Yeah, I'll tell you, you can't get to him because he's so real. I was listening today. I was I had a dental appointment, so I had a bus home, which takes a while. So I listened to the the thing, and it just was it just was annoying me, and it was annoying today me. or yesterday. Are you saying today? Okay. Uh, today, uh, it was annoying me because of the partisanship, you know? I mean, I understand we live in a partisan society, but if you're having a hearing, the job is not to sit there and try to take sides, but to try to discover, mm -hmm. right? You're and, absolutely and right. The, and the Republicans are not in any uh, desire to discover, they no. just get up and pontificate about how the person's wrong because the president didn't do anything wrong and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what it's about. Ask some questions. See what the answers are, okay? And, I, and the same is true of Democrats. I mean, it's not to say they aren't partisan, too. But I think the whole idea of these hearings is discovery. And they don't. Not, neither side really seems to be on a mission to discover. They just are on a mission to to uh, solidify their own beliefs. You know what else, a little side issue this has brought up for me? Yeah. Um, is the last time we had impeachment hearings mm -hmm. in 1973. Mm -hmm. on Nixon and I was on my first TV job. I was a production assistant mm -hmm. at the Dick Cavett well, no, Show. That was the time before with Nixon. Then we had Clinton. But I'm not yeah, talking about Clinton. I know, but you said the last time, and I, this wasn't the last time. Nixon wasn't yeah, the last it. time. Forget it. I can't remember where I was. No, you were talking about spot. Nixon. I can't you, remember. No, you were talking about Nixon, and you were working for Barbara I, Walters. No, that oh. isn't what I said. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's like when we were married. Anyway. Uh I was working as a love, lowly production assistant okay. at the Dick Cavett okay. Show. Okay. And the executive producer, when the hearings were coming up, the executive producer had brought in a whole bunch of television sets and scattered them all around the office. So I think his hope was that at least we'd get some work done while we were all watching the hearings. <laughs> yeah. So he let us have free reign with all the TV sets. Yeah. And so we really, really got to watch them closely. Plus, I was surrounded by 30, 35, 40 people who, like me, were news and political junkies. Yeah. So that everybody knew what they were watching. They knew the background. They'd been following politics for years and years and years. So the discussions around the office were just fabulously interesting. Yeah. And I kind of miss not having that this time. Yeah. Well, do, did you find, do you, as you, in your memory of that particular event, do you remember the same kind of partisanship, or did you seem to find that they were trying to discover? Well, you have to remember that we were living in a very, very, very different times, that Republicans, Democrats, didn't matter, were all much more respectable people than they are today. Mm -hmm. And respectable in their 
demeanor, in their language, yeah. so that nobody would ever say something about his ass, you know, or he loves your ass or something that Sondland said. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that would just never have been said, that everybody was um, uh, more respectful, I mean, is the way to put it, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's what I remember. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of years. You can't I can't necessarily trust my memory that long ago for nuances that you're asking about. Right. But I remember what you said earlier in this conversation, that people actually answered real questions then. They were very pointed questions sometimes, but they were questions as opposed to the the senators or the, uh, the Congress people pontificating, which is what they do, you yeah. know. Uh, and and it, it was the idea is is these hearings are meant to be exploratory, and you're looking for answers, and you're looking you're you're questioning what went on, and you want to find some answers. You're searching out the truth. None of these people are searching out the truth. They're just simply bolstering their point of view. And that's it. And I, uh, you know, and I don't understand all these Republicans just being lo in lockstep with Donald Trump. I think that is a bad road to go down. Listen, you know? do you think that these, those people, just the ones in Congress, not the base, you know, yeah. um, do you think that they are true believers? Or, because that's the only reason I can come up with for their blind behavior well, to somebody no, they were who doesn't seem to deserve it at all. And and I can't imagine, I mean, you remember you when it came out that J. Edgar Hoover pretty much had dossiers about bad stuff on clearly anybody, yeah. everybody in government? Right. I don't think that Trump has that. No. I don't think that no. his group is organized enough to ever have done that. So the only reason is just blind loyalty. Listen, he, he, the blind loyalty is only <clears throat> as long as Trump has oh, an over 50% rating when it comes to impeachment, where people, uh, it's under 50% rather, that believe that he should be impeached. Once That's it goes, well, it, it it's wavers back and forth, and this is among Republicans too. Uh, I, well, I mean, that's. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were talking. But, but what I'm saying is, is that there's a point at which the every politician will bail out on Trump because he doesn't have the backing. But right now, they're afraid he does, and they're afraid of him be, of of being bullied by him. So they want his support. They're beginning to find out his support ain't worth shit because every time he goes down to like Louisiana and says vote for so and so, people vote for the other guy. You but know. isn't it? I mean, that's ex that was the point I was about to make. Yeah, is that the last two people that he made a big deal about campaigning for yeah. with them in their states? Yeah, I mean they they lost by very very small margins, but they lost. Yeah, and. So I don't know if that's still driving Republicans who are in office and have to run again to be reelected. I don't know mm. if that's driving them or not. And it's saying, I'm not sure, maybe you you notice more than I do, <laughs> but a, a, something like 20 Congress people, many of them senators, but also House members, have already announced that they won't run for another term. What are they afraid of? I mean, why wouldn't they? Why would they yeah. support him? Well, I mean, I just you know, I don't understand this blind support of a guy who goes against all the values that Republicans usually look towards. I mean, you know, they don't believe you cheat on your wife. They would fight against that, and yet the guy who was the you know went out and had sex with a porn star. It's okay. We'll stand by him. I don't understand how the religious <laughs> right can follow this guy. You know, I mean, no, it, 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 he has no, he has no uh, 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 Christian qualities about him. And he doesn't go to church every Sunday. I mean, he doesn't give a shit about anything but Donald Trump. You know what else is important? The damage that Trump and his people, and he's really got a knack for hiring crooks. Um, the, the, they've done so much damage 
to the country, even the world, mm -hmm. um, whether it's, what is it, up to 75 or 80 environmental controls that they've just done away with or Trump has done away with, and all of the norms of running government and you know, extorting foreign governments and that sort well, of thing. How about how? It's, it, yeah. Let me finish my yeah. thought this time, yeah. please. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, is that even if you could start over tomorrow morning with a more reasonable person as president and in those cabinet positions, it would still be, I think, decades before we get anywhere near the a reasonable democracy with a reasonably small amount of grift and graft. It, I, the, the country is going to be a mess if you could get rid of them all today. What about the damage he's done for what, a long time? What's the damage he's done uh, to our our standing in the world? I mean, that's going to be take years to get back. You know. So anyway, ah. Uh, we should talk about happier things than Donald well, Trump. You know, I, I, well, you, we should talk about what interests us. But um, it's it's not that I'm unhappy. I'm very worried for the country, short term and long term. Yeah. Um, I am curious now that if the Senate, and I'm not in the prediction business, and I don't have a lot of patience with people who try. If the Senate does not vote to convict, I, I don't even want to try to imagine what Trump will do next, that he'll be unleashed. Yeah, I think he's already been unleashed. Hey, listen, guess what? I just looked at the clock and we've gone over. Yeah, yeah. Star, sorry to end on such a dire topic as Donald Trump, but... You know, let me ask you one last question. This is a little fuck going on. something else. Well, no, one last question. You and I both have limited times on this planet. Nobody knows, neither of us know, how long or how little we've got. Well, I can pretty well tell you I won't be here in about five years. Okay, <laughs> okay. And I'll tell you that I'm planning on being here in five years. But no matter what, I know that my time is finite now. And the question is, why do we give a shit? I care about the future for people who will be here. I, that's me, me too. It's a very unselfish thing because we could both say, fuck it, I'm not going to be here. I don't have to clean up this mess. But you are, folks. You are out there. Who? Are, but who do you think feels differently? Oh, I think there's some people who don't give a shit. I honestly believe that because if everybody gave a shit, there'd be, a, <laughs> there'd be we'd be rioting in the streets, okay, over the, all this sh crap. Do you know what I think is amazing? Speaking of rioting in the streets, yeah, Hong Kong, that the people have kept it up for more than six months every day. Hordes of them in the streets that's protesting. Right. That's right. I think that's the most amazing thing. It just doesn't happen that way here. People do one march and then they think they've done the whole job, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and the Hong Kong, the people who are out there just, I I just, they're amazing. Well, my wife's company, you know, is a Chinese company. And a lot of the people who work How for How has that affected their workers here? Uh, it, ha it hasn't affected the workers here at all. You mean Hong Kong Chinese, not mainland? No, these are mainland. It's a mainland, oh, it's company. mainland company. Mainland okay. company, but it has people and offices in Hong Kong uh -huh. because they're investment people and they're banking people. It's the largest bank practically in China. It's called Citic. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 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 they're, they're sending back reports saying it's getting pretty bad. You know, and they have to go to work every day. You right. know, so it's but but I'm taking it from the other side, of the yeah. point of the view of the protesters, of day after day after day they are out there, and this is something they so deeply believe in. I'm, and we're not yeah. talking a little march of you know several hundred people. We're talking tens of thousands well, all what's the time. What's interesting is that the Chinese government doesn't really know how to handle it. They, they are at a loss for how to handle it because they are... That's the point of great big groups of people yeah, protesting. Yeah. They, they, they've they been able to deal with it in the past because it's been a different kind of dynamic. But 
Uh, and this is also, you know, the the financial center. The, this is the the the, the what we, could we call it? It's the treasury of China. I mean, this is where they make their money. Their biggest money is in Hong Kong. So it's 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 really they they. I don't think they really know how to handle this, and uh, I think eventually they'll handle it badly, and people are going to get killed. That's what I. Have a couple died. At least a couple died already. Yeah, already. But I'm saying it could get a lot worse because if the Chinese government just says, fuck it, we're You know, every time hand. you predict something, it's always drastic. <laughs> yeah, well. You're there complaining about what a terrible downer subject for us to end up. <laughs> and your predictions are always the worst thing that could happen. We better get going before everybody is so depressed by us that they can't stand it anymore. <laughs> Uh, we get to see you in two weeks from now? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Timegoesby.net is her blog. Read it. It's great. Thank you, Ronnie. I promise I don't talk about politics very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Ronnie Bennett, and that's uh, and I'm sticking to it. She's terrific. I love Ronnie. You know, I, I uh, as, and and she was looking great today, just looking terrific. Uh, anyway, uh, listen, uh, it's time for me to turn on the uh, the the uh, phone lines here. Do, 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 do. Hold on a second. Not phone lines. How how old fashioned is that to say phone lines? Here, let me turn on the, uh, open up the Skype here. I can't open it up early because then some people call and it causes problems. And, and uh, yeah, that was because someone just called before on the last show. And that was, oh, come on. Let me turn it on. There we go. Now we're, we're on. And I think we're ready to go. If you want to call, our lines are open. Okay. Um I don't uh, see that we're going to have too many people here tonight, mainly because I wasn't on last night and people get pissed. But uh, we have a, we have quite a few people watching us right now. That's good. All right. Okay. Uh, but uh, why don't you give us a um, a bit of a a bit of a ringy dingy on the old Skypey wipey, uh, and we'll uh, we'll uh, talk at you. We're just waiting for people to call. So I just I'm um, just gonna sit here, um, you know. Oh, there we go, Ray Renati. Wow, Ray's the first one to call tonight. Jeez, Almighty! Oh my God! And he's yeah, he's, the gym as usual. he's pedaling away too. Let me see here. Let me uh, go, Goomba. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's for that. And then we got to open up Charlie Wallace here. And uh, let me see here. Um, Charlie, um, are, are you there? No, I'm going to close this down. Wait a minute. Cancel. Uh, can, cancel. Come on, cancel. Now I open up. Uh, turn, turn. I think your line is open, uh, uh, Charlie. I think you're... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was getting a little bit of feedback from you, so... But we're not now, so... Oh, hey, a different angle than you normally do this at. You know? I... I uh, are you there, so I've been Charlie? In, I've been in a play in Livermore. That's why I never call. Yeah. Char Charlie, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to make sure Charlie could hear me. All right. Let me see here. Let me do a little uh, Let me do a little going over to there so you can all see these guys. And there we go. Yeah. So you, well, you've been doing a play in Livermore? Yeah. Yeah. Livermore. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the traffic getting over there, it takes like two and a half hours for me to get there. Oh, really? Yeah, it's I, only a 45-minute drive without traffic. Are you getting paid for this? Yeah, it's a union job. I'm getting paid. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. good. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's they good. Have a professional, one professional theater in the town of Livermore. Let me see here. Jeff Stein has just called. Let me get Jeff on the, uh, on, on the thing here. Uh, let me see here. Jeff? Uh, uh, Jeff? I think we're getting some audio Stein from you. It's called. Let me get Jeff on the. Uh, yeah, Jeff, we're getting you. You're you've got your line open. You've got your audio open there. Turn your turn your speaker down. Audio. You see, you can. Yeah. 
Jeff. Is he? Yeah. yeah. How's that? No, but Jeff. No, I'm going to shut up. Turn your turn your speaker down. I've been doing it. The speaker isn't YouTube. down. Yep. No, yeah. it's not down. Yeah. Wednesday morning, I appeared at McGraw Hill to tell tales of my illness. What, what, now, what is that? Telephone conversations with Howard Hughes <laughs> and the street corner oh, meeting boy. with George Gordon Holmes. I was now about to meet Howard again in Florida, specific location. Oh, uh, let me just. Uh, okay, are you there, Jeff? No, now, now he's. Uh, <laughs> now his mic isn't on. Turn your mic on. Oh, he's muted. Oh boy, there he goes. He, oh, we just lost he him. He went away. Yeah. Oh, I think boy. he's gonna try again. Yeah. I, who knows? We, obviously, I think that was like it sounded like Gene Shepard is who it sounded like. Some recording of Gene Shepard. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so anyway, so you're doing a play in Livermore, so you're getting paid for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, Every that, week. because I wouldn't yeah. drive out to Livermore for free. Yeah. No, that's the only reason I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. it's a job. It's a real job. It's just, I have to, if I don't leave by 2 p.m., sometimes I just leave really early and then just hang out and do work at the library or Starbucks or something until yeah. the show. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, Phil won't be here tonight because he's got some kind of thing going. I don't know what, you know. I think it's his photo club deal where he beats up on old men. Uh, yeah, it's Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday. It's to, uh, yeah, he does that at least once a month. Yeah, okay. Now, here comes Jeff again. Let's see what yeah. happens. Uh, hello, Jeff. Are you there? How's that now? Yeah, I don't know what it was, but you you were, you had... I couldn't turn it off. You had us on somewhere. You probably, it was like something you were... That was not good. Okay, but we got it. We got it. We got it. It's, you're fine now, so that's, that's all that matters. There we go. Hey, Let Charlie, me. what's your shirt all about? Oh, well, that's thing? a Stephen Hawking statement, a uh, quote from Stephen right. Hawking. It's a quote it says, from... intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. And all the letters and uh, are, are used, numbers and stuff are used for the letters. Oh, really? I see. Nice. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you translated it for us. <laughs> now, if you could do it like Stephen Hawking was saying it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you're not, you're not, what is it, you're rehearsing, you've been going to rehearsals, is that it, or you've actually been doing the play? Oh no, well there was tons of rehearsals, and now we're in the play, so that's why I'm here right now, because we don't have a show tonight. Uh -huh. And how, how long yeah. are you going to be doing the show for? Just one more weekend. Well, one more weekend, uh, oh okay. Yeah, two shows, one show Friday, two on Saturday, and one mm. on Sunday. And, and, and what is the play? It's called Circle Mirror Transformation. Really? Oh, okay. By Annie Baker. Yeah. She she wrote uh, the flick that I think it won the Pulitzer Prize. Really? It was on Broadway for a long time. Oh, yeah. good. Well, I'm it's glad, really good play. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're doing something. Uh, that, yeah. 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 So that's good. So uh, let's see here. What else is uh, what else is new? So how you been doing, Charlie? Got any baseball going on? Oh yeah. Yeah, full night last night. Mm -hmm. Fun, fun. Uh, Kathleen won't be here tonight, and I'm going to tell you why. And I, I don't think she'll mind me saying it. Her mother passed. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, she, uh, she's been living with this for quite a few weeks. I've talked to her on occasion about it, and uh, uh, her mother finally went. And um, you know, we we send out our best to her. I told her that I wasn't going to wish her. Thoughts and prayers, or our our thoughts are are with you, because uh, you, you know you get that so much. If you've ever had somebody die close to you, they, everybody comes up and they they don't have any. They don't know how to how to be, you know, how to handle it. So they just go thoughts and prayers, or you know, uh, my thoughts go out to you. You know, I just told her, hey, mm. you know. That's the way it goes. You know, I'm hearing about more people dying lately that it's really getting depressing. Yeah. It's really getting depressing. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, I'd like to say that at my age, I guess it's good news because I'm, I'm not the one that everybody's saying, hey, sorry for your thoughts and prayers. 
Um, but, you know, it could be, you know, so whatever. That's it, you know. Hey, every day we find that somebody died. Yeah. That we do. Well, my mother once said, I mentioned this before, my mother once said to me, she says, when you're a kid, your biggest social activity are birthday parties. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you're old, it's going to funerals. You know? Yeah. And I'll tell you, a lot of people, you know, die young enough <clears> that, <throat> that I, I just hear these people going all the time. You know, and they're, now they're people close to me, too. I mean, I knew Kathleen's mother, and she was approximately the same age I am. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and she said she had been sick for many years. Um, so, you know, I mean... Uh, I, I have to. I guess I have to give thanks to the fact that I'm in moderately good health. You know, I've got the neuropathy, and uh, who knows what else to be determined. Um, mm -hmm. But it's all manageable, you know. So that's it. That's it. So I I had my um, my uh, biopsy, prostate biopsy. I was so worried about this because everybody, when they talked about prostate biopsies, were telling me, hey, it ain't fun, you know, and it's, yep. you know, and it's, 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 uh, it's uh, not comfortable. And I went in and except for the fact he had to stick the probe up my ass, you know, which if you're not gay, it's not fun. Uh, yeah, it, it was just absolutely painless. It was simple. I was talking to the guy while he was doing it. He said, well, you know, people say sometimes it feels like a little electric shock. So the first time he did it, I, I went, oh. And then a after that, I just went, and he just kept pushing, doing it and doing it and doing it. And I'm just sitting there going, I was worried about this. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so I had my biopsy and we'll find out whether I've got the cancer by the end of the week. <laughs> you know, and he says, look, you know, he says, uh, he says, how old do you want to be? I said, I'd like to live to be 80, 88. He said, this ain't going to kill you. You know, no matter how, how, how the stuff comes back, it's all manageable, you know. And I think he feels that I, I don't have anything that... You know, that uh, advanced. What, what, uh, Ray? I just want to say, my dad's just a little older than you, and he has neuropathy like you, and he has uh, the prostate cancer, but it's a non-issue. It's like, it's it's a total non-issue. Well, what do you mean the it's a non-issue? It's just so slow growing and everything, and he takes the estrogen, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just not what's going to kill him. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, unless unless this thing is just rampant, but the thing is, I have. Yeah, but it's. So I, ha I don't. I don't have any of those. In fact, my my PSA went down instead of up. So, you know, mm -hmm. he told me about a guy. My doctor told me that he knew a guy who the PSA folks is a test they give you that is. Nah, it's kind of you don't know whether it's voodoo science or not, but they that's the only thing they really have. Uh, so if they see it going up, they go crazy. He said he has a guy who's a patient who for the last 10 years has had a PSA of 90. Mm. Now, 90 is off the charts. I mean, I've got, I had a 6.7 and we went for a biopsy, okay? Mm. So uh, 90. And he said, it's never spread. It's never gone anywhere. He says, so you're, there's no accounting for any of this, you know? And um, so, uh, but I, what I was amazed by was all the dreaded stories I heard about prostate biopsies and the fact that this thing was, what? It was a no-brainer. You know, the worst part about it is, I went to a dentist today because I, I had this tooth and it had a filling in it and the filling started coming loose and it was, it was cracked and broken or whatever. So I had to go to the dentist today to have him refill that tooth. That was more painful 
than the whole yeah. op- thing I had the day before getting a, a prostate biopsy. You know? I mean, he had to put in, like, do two shots of Novocaine uh, on me and things like that. And I'm going, you know, I was in less pain yesterday with this, with this prostate biopsy. The only thing is now I'm peeing blood. But, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's it. Oh, here comes, uh, here comes Patrick. Uh, Mr. Blazik, hold on a second, Patrick. Let me see here. Here's Darth Pat. There we go. Got him. Oh, are you talk oh. about start talking about peeing blood, and Patrick pops right up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, and and also it's coming out the other end too, blood. And they say I could be pe- oh. peeing blood for for two weeks. So, you know. Um, Ah, oh, here comes Kevin, uh, a guy who also had a biopsy. So you know, uh, he knows what I'm what I'm talking about. But maybe he won't agree with me. Uh, but uh, wait a minute, look at uh, Kevin. Where is he? Uh, hog rider. There he is. Okay, got him. Boom. There he is. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi, Alex. How are you? Did I describe the biopsy correctly? I mean, it's really it didn't. Well, bother. for you, it was good. Huh? For you, it was good. Yeah, I'm I mean, glad. <laughs> well, did it you... wasn't for you, Kevin? <laughs> no, it was torture. Oh, wow. What do you mean it was torture? Now, did he put in... Uh... I don't know if he didn't get the right spot with the first shot, but, yeah, it was like uh, I could feel him going in and going, bink, and pulling it out, and then he went in, bink, oh, and you know, pulled it the way, out. That's the way it goes. It's, a, it's kind of like I felt it was like a staple gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he put it. Did they use anest- anesthetic on you? Uh, well, he they... said he did. They go in and give you a shot in there first. It's not a shot. It's a gel, I think. Well, whatever it is, yeah. I don't know if he hit the right spot yeah, or not. No, I, I, I'm by about telling the 12th you. Twelfth one, I was going. Are you done yet? I'm for te- Christ's sake, I'm, te- I'm, te- I'm te- in te- labor here. I'm telling you, he kept going, and he, and te- you know, it was like a, a stable gun. And I would be, ta- I was talking to him throughout the whole process, and I'm going, oh, okay. I was, I was talking to him and calling him names and everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, this thing, you know, and if let's say next year he says we got to do another one. I, I wouldn't fear it. You know, maybe my doctor is just better at it than your doctor was. Or maybe. Because yeah, I think, I don't remember the first one. Maybe the first one wasn't as bad and the second yeah. one was worse. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Well, this was, uh, as I say, I had this dental appointment today uh, in which I had a dentist who had was working two rooms at the same time. You ever get one of those? Yeah. You yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I had an emergency. So, uh, obviously, he was sticking me in there but uh he he in order to make me think that he was paying attention to me he'd go we're gonna have to give you novocaine and so he takes the gel on the on the cotton swab and puts it in my mouth and then leaves the room for 10 minutes yeah thinking this gives me something to do and then he comes yeah. back and he goes oh well i'll give you the novocaine boom 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 and he goes we should wait a couple of minutes and let it take effect and he goes out of the room for 15 minutes and I finally, when he came back and I'm numbed up and everything, I say to him, look, if this is a busy day for you, I can come back tomorrow. And he said, no, he said, we fit you in and we'll get take care of you. And soon enough, he started to go to work on me and he he pulled the old filling out and put in a new one and I was good to go. So, yeah. Hell, I got to get Novocaine when I get my teeth cleaned, for Christ's sakes. Really? Mm. Oh, Yeah. I, here's Metal what, on my teeth, I go through the roof. Well, you know what they don't give you much anymore, and I I just love the stuff. Was is the gas? Oh yeah, you know. I never does a gas. I mean, with gas, I've told uh, any number of people with gas, they could pull every tooth in my mouth out, and I wouldn't give a shit. I uh, know. Do it twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but I, mean, I pulled it. Uh, you know, I just did, did the gas, and they, I I had a dentist who would give me a gas when I was having my teeth cleaned. He would, you know, he'd give me gas all the time. And now you ask for gas, and it's like you're from outer space. They don't want to give yeah. you gas anymore. Or nope. if they want, before it was free. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like at least twenty five, fifty bucks. Now wait a minute. Now here's something great though. So I go, what, what happened was I had this tooth where food was getting lodged in it. And then it was, some of it was like if I would eat nuts or something, they'd get impacted in there and I couldn't get the nut out and whatever. And, but that was because this tooth, was, this uh, filling was, was cracked or whatever. 
Um, so, uh, uh, wait, what was the point I was trying to make here? So anyway, so I had to go yeah. to the dentist and have him uh, fill this tooth up. And um, I figured, oh, well, you know, my, what happened was I have this in, great insurance, but my, I've used up all my insurance for the year. I have $1 left in the insurance. So this was going to come out of my pocket. So there I am for like 45 minutes while he's drilling and cleaning and putting in the new thing and everything and blah, blah, blah. And da, da, da. I go to the front desk and I say, okay, what's the damage? And I'm expecting, what, $400 maybe for a filled tooth? Because I've got insurance, even though I don't have enough insurance, but I have insurance, they have to go by the insurance prices a hundred and fifty four dollars wow I, I, I to me that was a great day for me you know yeah for surgery you, huh yeah yeah it's for surgery that was not sur it wasn't surgery it was just filling you know yeah you know uh but anyway so one day it was they were going up my ass and the next day they were going down my throat so uh, <laughs> What are you kind of like a shish kebab, didn't yeah, you? I felt, I felt, uh, uh, yeah, it was like a rotisserie of sorts, <laughs> you know. Um, it was like a two-day orgy. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you say your father had prostate cancer, right, Ray? Yeah, yeah, he, he still does. And, um, you know, he takes the estrogen and it keeps it under control. It doesn't yeah. get any worse. And But he's growing tits and has hot flashes, right? Uh, well, he already had the, oh, I can't, I don't want to say anything. What? Um, well, he might listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's, he's much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he is. It's incredible. What it is. It's like, is it, it's like who the hell are you? <laughs> it's one way. This wasn't the dad I knew. <laughs> it's, it's one way they stop prostate cancer. Or they, they don't, it doesn't cure it. It stops it from progressing. Yeah. Yeah. Is they give you they they rob your body of testosterone. Yeah. Okay. Which is an Italian ice, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and and uh, they they do that, and what it does is somehow the cancers can't survive. Prostate cancer can't survive without uh, uh, without testosterone, and so you rob it of testosterone, and it diminishes, and it doesn't advance. And they keep it at bay that way. There's another way. I mean, you can go, uh, I might have to do it, radiation. Uh, but, uh, you know, what the hell? If that's all I got to do in order to not to get another, you know, 10 years of life out of me, that's fine with me, you know? I think if you're going to get an internal cancer, yeah, it's probably the best one to get. Oh, it, it you know, they always at, say it, it's... In el older age. Yeah. Well, it, 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 the reason so many men die of it is because they don't pay attention to the warning signs or they don't they aren't constantly checked for it. I've been yeah. checked for it for the last 10 15 years. So when yeah. they saw it go up, then they started watching it, okay? What happens is some people don't pay attention and before they know it it's too far advanced. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what you watching the debates is that what you're doing, Kevin? Yeah, Gabby's on right now. I'm undressing her with my eyes. Really? <laughs> you, 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 know, you know she's a you know she's a you know, you know she's a commie spy, don't you? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I love Russians. They're very beautiful. They, yes, they, I would I would do it mail order for her. Yes, yes. Have they asked Biden anything in this debate about his current predicament with the president uh, trying to in, in, intimate that he did something illegal? I don't know. I haven't watched it that close. You know, I'm, I got it on in the house and I'm walking by a room and I'll watch it for a couple of minutes. And he just seems like he's stumbling all over the place. Here's what bothers me about what Trump has done. You know, even if uh, he couldn't get the goods on Biden, the fact that this has all come out has sullied Biden's attempt yeah. at running for president. Yeah, yeah. You know, no matter I'm what, he, he, yeah, he's ruined it. it. He didn't have to go get the uh, information if there was any to be had, which I don't think there was, you know. Um, I think Buttigieg is making a lot of points tonight, though. Buttigieg is on a roll. Yeah, he is. Okay. Uh, yes, Patrick. 
He's the dark horse. Well, I, I just have to say this. I flipped it on, I don't know, like an hour ago. I haven't watched it. And then you flipped it off. <laughs> I, would, I was getting ready to go in the shower, so I had my hearing aid off, so I couldn't hear what was being said. But Elizabeth Warren was saying something, and Pete gave her a side eye that was just great. And I thought to myself... I would vote for you just for side eyeing that old bitch anyway. Yeah, I think I remember. <laughs> I think I saw that too. Yeah. I mean, he's just looking at her out of the side of his eye, like, like what? you're so full well, of shit. You, you know, I, w- I was talking to a girlfriend about this today about Buttigieg and why he probably may be the best possible candidate. Now, I mean, see if you agree or disagree with what I'm about to say. He, um, um, he is a better looking than Trump, better educated than Trump, better spoken than Trump. Uh, He he is, uh, he's served in the military, so he's better equipped to deal with that. I mean, in a way, he's a candidate I don't think Trump can fight. And he didn't write the damn bill. Yeah, right, exactly. (laughs) No, he didn't. His only... The question is, is, is uh, homosexuality, you know, what will that do? You know something? Let's find out. I don't think that's yeah, as I agree. Good. I don't think that's going to be as much of a factor. I hope, it doesn't, I hope it doesn't help do Obama shit. that he's black. Yeah. What were you going to say, Jeff? I know people who are in my family and my other part of the family, yeah. and they have gay people who are related Knock it off. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Jeff, maybe you misunderstood me. Like, half my friends are gay. I, yeah. I live in San Francisco. I'm in the theater. No, I world. think I know what I'm he's saying. Yeah. There, there, yeah, yeah. there, is, saying there that... is the inference that black people will not vote for a gay person. And I just think we're underestimating black people. You know? They won't, it's not his gayness that they won't vote for us the way he's been running South Bend. <laughs> he fired the first black sheriff, the first black police uh, commissioner they ever had. Yeah, but he might have been a bad police commissioner. Whether he's black or white, you get yeah, rid of he him. He wasn't. He only, he only fired him because the donors wanted him to fire him. Really? Yes, yes, Patrick. Yeah. But just remember this black folk in the South are more religious than you probably want to admit, and homosexuality is an issue there. And I've said this on, in the past on this show and on Jack's show, and Jack agrees. I mean, to assume that black people yeah. all think the same way is idiotic. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that has to do with black people. It's just the people in the South, period. And, and you might be right there, too. Yeah. Uh, but I know specifically um, with blacks in the South that are, you know, they're um, very, you know, the whole Bible Belt. Mm-hmm. And I know some of my black friends on Facebook who are preachers and ministers, they will not vote for him. They won't vote them because it, the abortion issue and um, homosexuality. And it, you know, it, it's a big deal for them. Well, well, then they're idiots. They might as well go into the afterlife right now. Well, well wait a minute. Here, here's my, the country. Yeah, but here's my question. Okay, you're black. Okay, you're religious. Okay, you know, being gay is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. Are you gonna? You're black. Are you gonna vote for Trump? No, he's he, Patrick's right. They just stay home. They'll, they'll stay home like they like they have, and other people have in the past with various. And I mean, like Hillary, um, I know of a few people that stayed home that are happen to be black because the abortion issue. It it's well, a big deal for them. So, you know, and I I mean. And that, you, and I think that's why uh, Trump likes to play the uh, Christian card or the the Bible card. Because he can drag some of those people into that. Yeah. You know, you, that's why you see it as rallies. You got the, 
the guys in the cards in the back of the behind him, you know, the black for black people for Trump. You yeah. know, that that's what he's dragging in there. Oh, those you know, guys and, are paid. And they're all usually they're down south money. in Texas or whatever, you know. <laughs> and I think that's what he that's why he goes on to the you know, the the Bible side there, the evangelistic side. Let me see here. I'm trying to I can't find uh, I can't find uh... Bree here, hold on a second. Bree, what name? What 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 well, name are you using? Is he riding a bike? What's he? No, I'm walking. He's roller oh, skating. Oh, well, wait a minute. No, I'm not roller skating. Roller skating. We go. I'm just go. walking. It's my lunch hour, and I'm going down to the mall. To there's this, there's a cheap sushi oh, restaurant Bree. I like to eat at. I finally found Bree. Okay, there he is. Turn your camera sideways so we get you in. Uh, landscape mode or have we lost him already i think we know it's about 75 cents a plate yeah well, why don't you turn your camera landscape oh wait, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute your camera doesn't go landscape does it oh there no, we go oh, there we go there we go yeah yeah see i just like that better so where are you exactly he's in kuala lumpur ladies and gentlemen which is in downtown malaysia um, what is that tall building? You know, he we're losing him a lot. Mm. Yeah, we were. When I get to the mall. Oh, yeah, be better. But yeah, what what's that big building that you were pointing at? Uh, that is a water theme park. That oh. building that looks like a like an office building. Uh. Yeah, we're losing you a lot here, Bree. A lot of metal. He keeps walking into dead zones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're, we're, 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 yeah. Lo we're losing. We're losing you a lot. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get rid of him. I think because he's 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 uh, you know it's uh, it's not working. Aloha. Aloha. It's, it's trying to switch the screen. It's trying to switch. I can see a reflection in your glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're really like it's terrible. Uh, it was switching we love you, Wi Fi. So I'm just switching the Wi Fi off and I'm just going totally 4G. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. Uh, good. Okay. You want to see a white tiger? A what? A white tiger. A white tiger. A tiger huh? Yeah. Where where would I see a white tiger? Where are you in? The... Uh, I'm gonna be walking above his cage in a minute. Oh oh really? Okay. Yes. Go landscape, will you? And we'll get a better shot of him. Wait a minute. Well, I don't know if we'll see him. We'll see if he's up. It's when the sun's out. He sometimes well, he doesn't come out. Just rattle his cage and wake him up. Is it still yeah. hot I there, Bree? I was thinking I could drop a chicken over the edge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, is he below you? Is he going to be below you? Yeah, he's going to be below me. And, and uh, we'll see if he's there. I bet if they did that, it's amazing he... if you think about it. You know, hundreds, yeah. maybe a, you know, thousands of people walk above him every day. Really? Without incident. Or, yeah. How does the white tiger feel about that? <laughs> we'll have to ask him. Yeah. Uh, so, are we coming to him soon, or do we? Are we going to have to wait for a half hour here? I know. Uh, less thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Uh, do we all? Seconds. Do we all have thirty seconds here? We, <laughs> no, wait a minute. We just now. We just lost his picture. <laughs> Let's see if it comes back. This is kind of well. Oh, there we go. There, there is a. Okay, so where is the uh, where's the tiger going to be? I want to see a white tiger. Huh? Oh, a live, tiger. a live tiger. Yeah, you are walking above a white a, a live tiger. Caution. Oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> okay, hold on. I got to make sure my hat yeah. and my eyeglasses are secured. He, so oh so it's down in the, he's down in there he's not really in a uh, in a in a cage right 
Oh, it just I lives see. down there. You gotta, you gotta walk on this. If if I took the, if I took the jungle, I'd get eaten alive. <laughs> oh really? Oh, so but he's down in there somewhere. Here, kitty, kitty, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. I Nick Reed Roy down wait there minute, too. Wait a minute, do I see something there? I thought I saw something there. Did you see him? No, I thought. No, uh, I can't tell. Is he down I can't there? See him. I can't see him. Okay. Well, that was a big whoop, wasn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Ladies. Okay. Ladies. A anyway. anyway. Yeah, I don't see him. He must be resting because it's. Uh... There, we can see some people screaming. Not because they're being eaten by Hello. the tiger. <laughs> oh. Uh... <laughs> Although they're right near the tiger. Oh, there he is. Where? Oh. Where? I don't see him. I don't see, see him. him. Where? Wow. I see him. Where? Yeah, he's right there. Right by those rocks or something. Those people are yeah. dang they're dangling him over the top. I think that's people. why he's over there. He hears the people screaming, and he's waiting for one to fall off. Yeah, there you go. It's like a lure. <laughs> Wait a minute, but I don't see him. I, I don't see him. Seizing it with dinner. Let me see here. Uh, right there, no. you see? Uh, okay. Right there. Uh, where, uh, right where? Uh, right there. Okay. There. I don't see him. Okay. I don't see well, him. That's as good as it's going to get. Sorry. Again, Alex, there's a little bush with a black stripe and a white thing behind it. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Last time I was on a roll. What if one of those kids falls out of there and into the tiger cage? <laughs> Free meal. Jeez. Uh, the last time I was on one of those, I puked so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible. Or he's oh. going to get a sushi. Okay. Wait a minute. Do, yeah. do you guys see the tiger? Anybody see? I don't, I don't see him. I don't see him either. I see him now. Huh? I see him. He's on the right behind that little thing of Don't grass. Don't you see me pointing? Yeah, see that little thing of grass with the white and the black next to it? No, wait I a just minute. see a shadow. Oh, I don't see it. Hold on. There's a white and a black thing. Okay, wait a minute. Right. Nobody talk. Let me just uh, talk zoom to his in. Bri. Talk to his Bree. I can't zoom. Uh, you know, I'm on oh. Skype. I don't even know if that's possible. <clears throat> yeah, you could zoom. I got to get a better camera. I guess. Yeah, but. Well, anyway, he's there. You just don't I see, see him. him. I'll go I back and watch him in the reruns. I'll go watch him. I see him. Okay. That yeah. means you got to get closer, Bree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get closer. I see what you're doing. You're going to get me eaten alive. Yeah. Do like that lady. Climb over the fence and get closer. Yeah. yeah. Taunt it. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, uh, how you doing, Bree? How's everything? Uh... But I, I was trying to, when I woke up, I was trying to watch the uh, debates. But yeah. I couldn't get it. Uh, my Lexi which is the term I use for Alexa, so I don't set her off. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I asked, I tried, MSNBC said, not available in your country. And oh. then uh, I, I tried to do all the news talk stations in Atlanta, figuring maybe one of them was covering it. Nope. Then I tried C-SPAN, because I listen to C-SPAN a lot. Mm -hmm. They were covering the hearings or something. Yeah. Wow. So uh, eventually, when I got to the office, mm -hmm. It came up on one of the, uh, one you know how uh, Alexa has the little messages. Yeah. And it said you can watch it on MSNBC. So I tapped the screen, and I was able to hear just a little bit, but not a lot. And it just seems like it's kind of the same thing over and over. Yeah. Well, here's my big deal now. Um, I finally got it all set up, and I can go. Echo, turn off studio. <laughs> there we go, folks. Echo, turn on studio. There we go. So, isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh, look, uh, there's a shark. Oh, the Sharknado alive. Sharknado uh -huh. alive. They actually did a ride based upon a really bad TV show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's six movies. Show, Alex. I love that, those movies. I love them. Oh, really? 
They're so they're bad. Classic. They're so bad. I love them. <laughs> I heard they were working on seven. Sharknado I thought they were seven. up to eight myself. <laughs> Yeah. So what is My this? My daughter is has it... a friend over for a sleepover, and they have to watch them every time they come over. This is obviously an amusement park, right? Uh, yeah. What, what's the name of it? Uh, it's called Lagoon. Lagoon Malaysia. Lagoon Malaysia. Okay. And and the, are, were you going there for lunch? Is that what you were doing? Or? No, no. I, I have to pass by it. Uh, in order to go to the shopping mall where they have my sushi place. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I walk on it. There's canopy walks yeah. that take you throughout the area so you don't have to run into tigers. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you, you become sushi for the tiger. That's, that's good. Yeah. You know. Anyway. We have Texas chicken in Texas. Texas. I have it down the street. I have it right down uh, the street here in Harlem. Okay. If I lose you, yeah. uh, then you know I'll lose you. Yeah. Because uh, I am in the basement. Uh, yeah. I'll try to see if they have Wi-Fi. Well, it doesn't matter. You know. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, Pete let's... Buttigieg looks like he's rising. Alex, you should be very happy. He's your guy. Well, I mean, it's not that he's my guy. I just think that it's gotten to the point where he's uh, he's uh, maybe the best idea. I mean, what do you think, Charlie? I mean, you're well, he's number one in Iowa and New Hampshire. So, hey, who knows? Yeah. What What do you think of him? Well, I mean, what's your take on him? Would you? I I don't like him. I he's a, he's a kind of a fake liberal. Really? Yeah. Why do you call him a fake liberal? What is it about him that? Oh, uh, this week they came out with a with a, uh, a um, video from ninth from uh, twenty ten of him praising the Tea Party. Oh, really? The Republican fucking Tea Party. He was praising. So I'm sorry. I, I he he lost my vote there. Unless he gets the nomination, he gets the nomination. He's better. Are you than sure that this uh, video? Are you the, I, are you sure this video is authentic? Yeah, that was him. Fake news. Oh. Oh. Hey, Bree, 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 can you hear me? Bree, tell your audio, Bree. Tell your. Wait a minute, I can mute. I'll, I'll, I'll mute. Let me see here. Where are we? Hi, thanks. There, I, I'm, I muted him. Now we can get back to our discussion. Anyway, yeah. what I was saying is that uh, Buttigieg, um, uh, I, I, just, I didn't know that about him. I, I, where can I find this video? I don't know. I was on YouTube. So. Well, let's see here. Wait a minute. Buttigieg. Uh, Buttigieg. Boy, I don't even know how to it. Tea Party. Buttigieg. You judge. I guess I pronounced, I spelled it right. Or Buttigieg, uh, Tea Party. Let's see what it comes up here. But Buttigieg Tea Party. Or tea bagging, maybe. Uh, tea. Buttigieg. <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Uh, let me see here. I, I, I uh, Buttigieg. I have to. Let me see here. Uh, oh well, I can't find it. I, I can't even figure out how to spell his fucking name. Buttigieg yeah. Tea Party. I would think the B U T T I would get you there, just that all by itself. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to look up Tea Party, and I can't get yeah. it to um, uh, Buttigieg. How recorded the Tea Party in his first race? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. It says uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, was struggling to be taken seriously as a first-time candidate for office in September of 2010. So with the Tea Party taking off, the 28-year-old unknown running for Indiana state treasurer showed up at South Bend Church to meet candidates night, hosted by groups aligned with the populist conservative yeah. Barack Obama bashing movement that would power the next decade of Republican politics. It just says he showed up at this thing. Well, there's actually a video of him giving part of his speech. Really? And he does praise them. Well, you know, he, 
being a politician. Backlash after speech at Tea Party event resurfaces online. Ah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I, I don't see any the video, though, of it. That's a, the problem. Let me see here. Uh, no videos? Let me see here. Buttigieg faces a bit of a backlash for praising. Ba, ba, ba. Chaos. Uh, uncovered Pete Buttigieg at the, oh, here we go, at a Tea Party event. Okay, let me see here. I don't want I don't want this uh, commercial that's running, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to be. <laughs> you got to tantalize us, huh? <laughs> well, I'm not going to run the video, folks. Uh, because no, I mean I, Bree was showing his sushi. Let me, whatever. See, let me see here. Let me see here. Skip ads, oh, but then I have to. Uh, let me see here. Uh, looked at me as if I was absolutely nuts when I suggested that uh, I would be coming tonight to speak with a group that's often identified with the Tea Party. Uh, there are some, especially in my party, who think that the Tea Party is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Republican Party. Naughty, naughty. That's people. Okay, well, that, uh, that doesn't sound, I don't know what that amounts to. I'll have to go look at it later, you know, uh, and see what it says. Anyway, uh, by the way, uh, Bree, if you can hear us, can you hear us, Bree? I turned your, I muted you. Uh, so if you want, want to talk to us, you can unmute yourself. Uh, but I muted you because there was so much noise there that it was overpowering us. Okay. Uh, he's having his lunch. What's he going to have? Is he having sushi? I didn't see that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Oh, he's ordering. He's ordering there. Okay. Anyway. So. Uh, so you, that's why you're against Buttigieg. I'll have to look at that later, you know. Um, I don't know that I necessarily uh, hold that against Bree, somebody. Bree, wants your attention. Oh, yes, Bree. Yes, Bree. I, uh, wait a minute. I can, un, I can unmute him probably if I want to. Uh, wait a minute. I can't hear you, Bree, uh, because you're muted. I've got you muted. Can you hear me? Unmute yourself. Yeah. I, 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 okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know I had to do it myself. I thought you were in control there. No, Alex. no. I no. If I mute you, you can. Uh, you're the only one that can unmute yourself. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But I mean, seriously, it, it, you're gonna uh, rule out Buttigieg for one thing. <laughs> That's not the I only mean, thing. About, I already mentioned at least two. Oh, okay. But I mean, think of the things Trump has done and his supporters stick by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I know. In relation. Well, some Republicans said it doesn't matter if Trump broke the law. I mean, that's their point now. Now that they're coming out proving that he broke the law, I said, well, it doesn't matter if he broke the law. I, I want to ask everyone a question. Let me let me suggest to you that in the front of your house, there is a car, and that car is blocking your driveway. Mm -hmm. And that car has been there for a week. And you you call the authorities and they say, well, yeah, we're trying to get in touch with the guy. We'll get back to you. Uh, you know, I don't know, for, maybe it has a boot on it, so they can't move it. So a guy comes along that you sort of know, and he says, uh, I'm just going to, you know, hook it up to my tow truck and move it 20 feet. Yeah. Technically, it's not legal, but it's going to help you out. Would you Would you tell him, okay, go ahead and do that? Yeah. I mean, you would be happy if he did that. Well, that's Trump, and that's Trump supporters. No, it's not because right. he didn't do that to help somebody else. He did it to help him fucking self. The only well, person that helps is Trump. Uh, some people just see it as government doesn't work. It's all gridlock. They they're always saying blah look, blah. Look, but I, 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 I said I, him as, as powerful. I said this earlier. Why is it that Christian groups uh, endorse Trump? Why is it that God-fearing Republicans back Trump? This is a guy who is strictly immoral. I mean, he fucked a, 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 a porn star while he's married, you know, and they just kind of go, well, that's Donald. What? You know, I mean, if, if Buttigieg is, uh, is uh, an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, so is Donald fucking Trump. Yeah, I've never understood it. I don't understand how they can excuse the behavior. That's what I don't understand. Uh, it's it's all immoral behavior, you know. 
boy, it's I like wish they're I... making him God. He's 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 as all powerful as God. Nothing yeah. he can do is wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't understand how they can even back <clears throat> him or excuse his behavior, or excuse just excuse his his behavior in the way that he handles people and what he says about other people. I mean. It, it, I, I'm, I'm talking from a religious standpoint. If you're a Christian, he engages in nothing but consistent unchristian behavior. You know? Yet the church is, hi, how are you, Donald? We're asking our parishioners to vote for you. Yes, Patrick, maybe you got an answer. Well, I mean, Kanye West is now being accepted by Christians. Yeah. And- as legitimate that he'd made a change and there's somebody who was nigger dip nigger that fucking this fucking that and <laughs> you know i mean is his conversion real or not who knows and with donald trump i think a lot of christians just like and i'll bring this up just like the people in the bible belt that vote democrat mm-hmm. even that they're against abortion, or they might be against, you know, uh, marriage equality. Mm-hmm. You look at it as, on the whole, mm-hmm. the else is right. So we'll just ignore the abortion, and we'll ignore the gay stuff. And it's the same with the Christians on the Republican side. They probably look at the whole and go, well, we already knew what we were getting with him as, as a playboy we already you know and but we like this 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 and this it's the same for both parties Alex. everybody dismisses what they can stomach and say eh, and leave it alone and then the rest of us may be sitting there going what the fuck i thought you were xyz i mean i i agree with you i i sit there in awe of both Sorry. So, well, I mean, I just don't, I just don't understand the, um, I, I don't understand the uh, Republicans who back this guy unwaveringly, in spite of the fact that he engenders all the negative aspects of what they supposedly believe. You know, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Charles. Charles. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not really the same with both parties because the Republican Party, you got somebody like Bitters. That, that, that gets caught with a prostitute and wearing baby diapers and stuff, and he's still in the in the Senate. Al Franken mimics grabbing a woman in, by the breast, and the Democrats kick him out. So it's not the same for both parties. Well, the Democrats are kind of famous for eating their own, you know, uh, and that's the problem with that one. Did you have your hand up, Jeff? No, no, I just wanted Charlie to talk. Oh, you just wanted Charlie to talk. Okay. Good. He was, Good. He was hidden. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> did anybody watch the hear the hearings today? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. How'd you I feel? Did How'd you feel about? It? I got annoyed by it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Sun, yeah. Oh, Sunland muddied the water so freaking bad it was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. What What were you? What, what did you have your finger up for, uh, Bree? A little bit. He watched. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Um, it's so uh, he's doing mime tonight, by the way, in case you're listening to the audio version of this program. Um, I don't know. I uh, I liked Sondland when I first heard him in the morning, and then he kind of like was changing his tune in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, uh, he became... Trump got to him. Well, he became, yeah, he became less and less believable is what happened, you know. Exactly. Um uh, and um, it, my my ex wife Ronnie was saying to me, and this was I think uh, off off when we were when I wasn't recording her, that she said she didn't like him. She felt he was very duplicitous and an asshole, you know. Oh. And that uh, uh, and I went well, I don't know. You know, I mean, he was saying a lot of things we wanted to hear, but then I started hearing the <clears throat> hearings on the way home, and I'll tell you what I'm sick about with these hearings. If it's the Democrats asking the questions, it's all in a certain direction. But then when you get to the Republicans, they're even worse. Uh, 
Because what they're doing is they're not even, they're not saying, hey, we're here to ask questions and to investigate, all right? They're just yeah. saying, I'm here to give a speech on why this is bogus. I'm yeah. here to, to, yeah. to, you know, make a, you know, Nunez will get up and just do the, the company Every time line. he comes on, he starts giving a speech about the, the, the fiasco. Yeah. And I mean, that isn't why they're there. They're there to ask questions of these people who feel they have something to contribute in this discussion. Uh, and it's, you know, it's pretty terrible. It's, I, I, and I found it just annoying after a while. Yeah. You know? Uh, now, yesterday with the, uh, who was the guy, the, uh, the was it yesterday or the day before that the uh, the soldier was on? the uh, Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel Vidman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Volker, yeah. Yeah, I liked him. I thought he was terrific. You yeah, know, and I thought he was pretty consistent, but he just overheard. You know, I mean, um, yeah. And Sondland was supposed to be the big key thing. That's what I was kind of waiting for. And he, you know, he started off good, but like you said in the afternoon, he just he muddied the waters when they, when the Republicans came after him. He just had sat there and said da 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 da. You know, oh no, I didn't hear it. No, I didn't. One second he's saying. You know, it was uh, no. Pre he yes, there's a you know quid pro quo, and then <laughs> and then the afternoon is no. He didn't really say that. Can we no, stop he didn't saying? Really say can we say, quit saying quid pro quo? I hate that. You know why? Yeah. You know why? Because it's so hard to say anyway. Nobody. Yeah, it is. Quid pro this quo. You know. Uh, just say this for that. And it's this fake intellectual that. too. Yeah. 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 Just say this for that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know he he, he he got intimidated by him I think in a lot of ways. Pippen yeah. was on the call. He was on the call. He was not secondhand. He was on the call with the with uh, Zelensky and Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says he he wasn't sure if he was on the call. Yeah, well, I was kind of you know well maybe well it was. It was loud, but I don't know if it was that loud. And, you know, there was a bunch of bullshit. Listen, Sondland's a motherfucker who gave Trump a million dollars when he ran for he, exactly. office. Exactly. And he was, just, he was saving his ass. He wanted to get on the plane and go home. And I'm sorry, even though maybe he says something I want to hear, I don't like him. I don't either. <laughs> you know, I don't like him. You could him. tell like he was just there for bullshit. By the way, Patrick has a smirk on his face right now. Patrick, yeah, why, why the smirk? What why are you thinking, Pat? <laughs> I thought this whole thing had been bullshit from the beginning as a circus, the way it's been run. Because I watched just snippets and like what happened today. You guys are saying it. This isn't Phil or me saying it. You guys are admitting yourself that you got people up there talking out of both sides of their mouth and not getting their shit straight. Mm -hmm. And if Phil were to say that, you guys to be jumping down his throat saying he's full of shit, but I like the fact that Phil's not here, and you guys, you you admit it yourself, and the guy that was on last week that said, I heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody. I heard it through the grapevine. That was funnier than fuck to me, that, you know, it reminded me of the song... Um, I heard it from a friend or heard it from a friend or heard it from something like that. And I'm like, if nobody actually fucking directly heard it, why are they testifying? Because that would be like me listening to my mother talk to somebody on the phone in another room and then saying, well, I heard my aunt on the other end of the phone, she said, blah, 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 I think. It was pretty loud. Well, if I wasn't on the phone, I can't even prove that I heard what I thought I heard. Yeah. So it, it, this has been a circus, and I've been amused by whenever I've turned it on, and I'm amused more by what you're angry at, Alex, is when the Democrats are on, they're aiming one way, and I love it when the Republicans come on because they're just trying to discredit the whole thing. And I'm sitting there going, they're right, though, because a lot of this, they don't have what I've seen as legitimate witnesses who can say without any doubt, mm -hmm. I heard X 
Y, and Z, it all, I think, I might have, I sort of, and then the guy, like you said today, this morning he was sure of himself, and then this <laughs> afternoon he's contradicting what he said this morning. So Well, here, here's the thing, though. I, I will say that I, I like the Democrats marginally better in this than I do the Republicans because the Democrats at least are asking questions. The, the Republicans aren't asking questions. They're just giving five-minute diatribes on why this is a sham and, and, and all of that. They're trying to— And they keep smearing the people that are testifying. Well, yeah, and they, 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 they're trying to um, uh, slow down the proceedings, basically, is what they're doing, uh, and, and uh, throw a monkey wrench into the hearings. Uh, uh, I think their job should be just like the Democrats to ask questions. They may be pointed questions in their so on their side, you know, but nevertheless, uh, ask some questions. Try and get some discovery here. Let us find 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 out things for us. Yes, uh, Bree, have your hand up. Mm -hmm. Bree, Bree, okay. frozen. He's frozen. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, the thing that they're trying to do, they're using the word bribery uh, in order to uh, link it to the Constitution. But let's face facts. This is all about words. I'll tell you, the audio we're getting from you is so bad. You're just frozen, stuff like that. And I think we're going to have to kind of like uh, um, say goodbye, Bree. In fact, we've lost Bree. In fact, we've lost um, we've lost a couple of people here, actually. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. The server, disconnect. Okay. What is that all about? I have no idea what that is. I'm having problems here, folks. I'm having problems. Let me see here. Are we having... Are, are you there, guys? I guess everybody is frozen up. Oh, my internet is off. Fuck me. My internet is off. Oh, boy. Oh, well, nobody's going to hear me at all. Oh, uh, let me see here. Wow. Hmm. I've got a problem here. Oh, fuck me. Oh, Jesus almighty. You know, I, I just, uh, I, for those of you who are listening to the audio, we're going to bring it to a close now. Uh, because, well, no, everything's coming back now. Everything's coming back. Let me see here if we can. Um, uh, let me see here. Okay. Uh, are you guys there at all? I don't know if they're there anymore. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can do this by telling the join call. Let's see if this stuff comes together here. Um, we're we're now um, br broadcasting again. Uh, we should be up and running. Well, I don't know. Are we are we are we up and running here? Yeah, we are. Okay. I'm gonna see here. Join. Let me put, do this. And see what happens. See if I can get the, uh, the Obama administration. Are, are, you, are you guys? Are you other guys there? Hey, everybody. Are you, are you there? Are you there, guys? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah we, I got them back. There was something during the testimony about withholding the Javelin missiles during the Obama administration yeah. until they got some some favorable, uh, you know, for the president of Ukraine. So okay, Obama yeah. was asking for something. But again, we all agreed that hey, this this would be the mm -hmm. beneficial to the, thing country, to do, the moral thing not to, do, to the to president, nobody... not to Obama. Well, how many other administrations had a, a rogue uh, a rogue person doing ambassador work like Giuliani? Well, if you're asking how many ambassadorships were sold, well, no, it's not ambassadorship. Well, that goes back a long time. He's not I mean, an ambassador. He's what the hell was he doing that stuff? Like one, but he's not. Why was he doing that stuff? Hmm. I look at it this way. If our system and country can survive Trump, we'll know we're okay. If we can't, well... Well, that's we'll the question. Is, the can't we survive? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody I know 
said mm -hmm. that right when he was elected, is that the government will survive Trump. It's just a whether we can survive it. And, and it probably will. You know, that's the whole thing. Oh, yeah, there'll be a government after Trump. Well, not even... But the problem It'll be pretty is, messed up, and we'll have to fix what it. What kind of government are we going to have? Yeah. Well, yeah, we are going to be a democracy. Remember that. I got to tell you, a couple of minutes ago, uh, we we went down. Um, we're still going on. Let me see here. Are we still going there? No, uh, we're uh, we're we're not. We're you're not, on. Uh, well, I'm. But you're in blurred mode. Uh, what? You're in blurred mode. Yeah, your background's blurred. Yeah. What do you mean my background's blurry? Your, your yeah. background your is in CD, blurred mode. DVDs and stuff are all blurred out. Oh, real? What? Yeah, if you you that that mode that you can put your camera. Yeah, into, Alex, you look like your background is blurred. Looks like you're doing a documentary, and they're saying, Alex, how what was it like in the 1960s in the states? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if we're going out on the uh, on the. Uh, oh, there we are. There we go. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can get this going here. Uh, there we go. Yeah. It, w w what happened was my uh, my uh, internet went down, hmm. and uh -huh. and I just kind of kept recording it. So people, if you're watching a recording of this, it's going to be a little. It's going to be a little weird. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, well, we kept going. Huh? I know you ca You guys kept, kept going. going. Yeah. Yeah, without me. I'm sorry, just Trump is acting like a dictator. He's trying to act like Putin. He's trying to act like Kim Jong-un, and, and, and he's getting away with it. Yeah. Republicans are letting him get away with it, and, and if he gets reelected, the people are letting him get away with it. And we don't have a democracy anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, he isn't really a Kim Jong-un. He isn't that good. <clears throat> Well, I'm not yet. <laughs> but if we get the idea he's above the law, he will be starting to. You think he's not? Uh, uh, you think he doesn't want to lock up his political opponents? He right. just can't get away with it right now. Right, right. But right. you keep giving him an inch, he's gonna take a mile. You think he won't be throwing Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton in jail in in 2022 if he gets reelected? Yeah, yep. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You know, I mean, it, it's really, it's it's amazing uh, what he is getting away with. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff, go ahead. The, the one thing that I know about the Republican stuff that's mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. is a lack of making critical thinking. They yeah. don't make any decisions other than somebody uh, is teaching them. Right. They do this every day. Right. right. It's amazing. Can't they think by themselves? Apparently not. Apparently not. I mean, they've yeah, got... This... Patrick, how do you feel about that? Uh, you know, I mean... I, I'm... Well, you know that I'm not a sick of fans anyway, and I don't consider myself a Republican. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I think, you know, yeah, you're you're breaking up for some reason. You're breaking off now. You're, bre you're breaking up. Uh, I think it's uh, Bree's background noise that's knocking him out. Oh really? Oh sorry. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. Now, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, am I good? Yeah, you're good. No, yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Um, so um. Uh, now, where was I going with that? Uh, well, you're not a sicker fan. We know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I when I look at certain things that are done or said, I know I myself, like I said, I, I look at like these hearings, and I look at them differently than you guys do, even though I'm not a fan of Trump. But I look at them from an outside view, and I say, it fucked up anyway because nobody's running this thing like a real thing, and they don't have credible witnesses. Right. And then I look at things that Trump does, and some things I'm okay with, some things I'm not. And that that the thing is, um, he'll never earn my vote. But like the military thing in Syria, mm -hmm. when he, you know, when he pulled the troops out. I was not for that. I found that to be ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it just, 
it's one of those things where I think it's more of him not listening to the people that know yeah. that he supposedly, like every other administration, surrounds himself with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it uh, the latest thing I, I have to give him credit for, because somebody got to him. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? The last person that talked to him is typically the one that influences his opinion. Right. Uh, the senator from Wisconsin, Ron Johnson, had been against banning the vaping liquids um, that Trump right. wanted to ban all vaping liquids uh, from the stores and all of that, all the flavored stuff, because of those deaths. And that's not what the problems were. It, you know, it was the homemade stuff. And apparently, Senator Johnson was the last person to talk to the president because the president had backed off of that. And that's the thing that bothers me. You know, you're talking about critical thinking, Jeff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the president does much thinking on his own. It's other people, and then he might sit and assess something, but he did not have any far as I can see, any original thoughts of his own, um, it's always other people influencing, and if he doesn't like it, mm -hmm. like Syria, you know, I mean, how many people in the military told him, don't get out of don't there, do it. stay, 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 and he goes, fuck it, we're getting out, you know, I mean, so that, that's where I'm at, it, it, like I said, some of the stuff I'm, I'm okay with, uh, a lot of it I'm not, and then there's other stuff that I I, I don't care one way or the other because I think it it, it isn't destructive. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Charlie. I think I think the whole thing about pulling out of Syria was because he had that discussion with with Erdogan, and I think what it was is Erdogan promised him all kinds of financial boons from his businesses in Turkey and so he did this thing that Erdogan wanted him to do. So he didn't his 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 foreign policy in that instance was not based on what's best for the United States. He based that on what's best for Donald Trump. And I'm sorry, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican or or, or Green Party or what, mm -hmm. if you're only in it to benefit yourself, you should not be president. Okay. All right. So anyway, what we're doing, what we're doing is we're uh, arguing here. I've been trying to get everything back the way it was here. So excuse me if I haven't been paying much attention. But what we what we're saying here is, Trump doesn't believe anything. He doesn't believe in anything. He just believes in himself. He believes in what's good for Donald Trump is is good for Donald Trump, and the fuck what's good for the country. Yeah. So, you know, make your deal with the Ukraine because you want to get reelected, so you want to get something on Biden. And, you know, be good to Erdogan because you've got a Trump property in Turkey. You know, I mean, it, 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 have we learned our lesson about hiring somebody to be president of the United States who, quite frankly, um, uh, has too many personal interests going for him? It... it, it Last time we should ever elect a businessman as president of the United States, you know, and that includes Bloomberg, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, because there'll always be, even if if they're Bloomberg, I think is a fairly decent guy, but I do think he will have second thinking about certain things where his personal interests are concerned. So you can't you can't really you know I don't know I just it's all uh, it, it, I just it, we've got a guy in as president of the United States who is slowly but surely taking this country down. He's taking it down in all manners, uh, uh, all kinds of ways, including a lot of the ecology things and so on. I mean he's. He's, I, and you're right about the vaping thing. It's amazing how he changed on that one. Just like that? Yeah, just and, like that. And, and the only reason I know intimately about that is because it's my senator 
and he would interview it on one of the local radio shows. Um, fuck, when did when did he change his mind? Like Monday or Tuesday on that? Something and, like that. And uh, the senator was on a couple days ago and mentioned he'd been trying to talk Donald Trump off the ledge on that. And then when I heard Donald Trump is dropping it, I thought, it's true. It's the last person that talked to him that seemed to get the results of whatever it is, whether it's good or bad. So, you know, Johnson must have talked to him at, you know, like 8.30 the night before, and mm -hmm. he probably went to bed and thought about it and went, yeah, we'll, we'll not ban everything. Well, yeah. Does anybody watch Fox here? Oh, yeah, I do. Well, yeah. Is it my imagination, or are they slowly turning against Trump? Well, yeah, they are. It seems, it seems like they're kind of getting into the middle anyway. Yeah, they, they seem to be a little more. I mean, I, I, every, I, I tuned in the other day, and there was somebody, you know, railing against something Trump had done. And I'm going, this is Fox? You yeah, know, this well, is people Fox. like Tucker aren't. But, no, know. those, those <laughs> I watched them for about five Tahoe. minutes. Today. Yes, but Patrick. Um, there's more critical thinking going on. Yeah. And like the show outnumbered. Yeah. Uh, they, the depending on who are are on there, um, they do have like Harris Faulkner. Yeah. The African American lady, and then yeah. there's uh, Melissa Francis. They are like the co-hosts. Yeah, yeah. Actually, critical in their thinking and the way that they will bring things out. And then the other person that's on there quite a bit is Kennedy. I don't know if you remember yeah, yeah. her TV days. Yeah. She's a libertarian, and she's you know she's a Trump supporter. But lately, there's been a lot of you know thoughts behind well, what the hell is this about? Yeah. Or why won't this get discussed? You know, and, and so I don't know that they're turning against him, but it's more of there's no being sick of fans like perhaps they've been the last several years. Yeah. Hannity, on the other hand, still has his tongue up his ass, giving him rim jobs like, you know, nobody's business. I haven't watched Hannity in no. 10 years, because I never could stand the guy, but I, when I do flip through, you know, it's always, you know, praise Trump, so. Yeah, yeah. If, he, if I um, hear him on, I'm off in 10 seconds. It's just... Oh, he's Fox's he's version of, um, uh, what's your name, Rachel Maddow, where yeah. <laughs> whatever the Democrats do, Rachel is right there, and Hannity is same thing for the Republicans. Well, I'm just tired. I'm sick and tired of television that is playing to a particular audience and telling them everything they want to hear. I'm tired of MSNBC because I, 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 I feel they've got their tongue up my ass all the time, giving me a rim job. And, and, and if I were uh, to the right, I think I'd be pissed off at Fox for the same reason. You know, just give me some open discussion with different ideas that maybe I can absorb a newer idea or maybe I can hear somebody else's thoughts on things. But, I mean, I, I do. Any of you feel, I mean, you watch MSNBC. Yeah. Do you feel the same way I do? I'm uh, bored with it. Alex. I am just so bored with it. Alex. Yes. Bree? Well, you know, uh, one of the things is that the, it's hyper-commercialization and commercialization of the media, mm -hmm. you know, they they do target audience, and it'd be the equivalent if you imagine. I mean, I teach in the university classroom. It'd be like me going in and saying, uh, "What do you guys think? Does the sun rise in the east and set in the west, or does it rise in the north and the south? Whatever you guys think that is, uh, let's go with that because that's what you think, you know. And it's ridiculous, and yeah. we've lost the public service nature of news and information is gone yeah. and it's replaced by uh, opinions 24 hours a day because they got to fill the time mm -hmm. and how do you feel about things and what do you believe you know i love when people say do you believe in climate change it's like it's not a religion you know <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter whether you believe in it or not it's well happen. can't you be it, yeah but, but can't you be a, a, a republican 
and believe that there is such a thing as climate change? I mean, it's an intellectual question. It's not a a political question. Yes, Patrick. Some do. Climate change exists. It's existed from the beginning of the fucking planet. So that's that's where I stand on it. As far as the other shit... Then the question is, the question is, yeah, the, is not the is there climate change, but is it worse than it's ever been? We don't know that. I mean, well, well, is it man-made? Ask the people in Miami. I, Does well, man have the ability to change the climate? And the answer is yes, we do. We do it all the time. Miami yeah. floods during sunny days now. It didn't do that 20 years ago. Well, here's, here's one of the benchmarks that I've heard is do you think if climate change, as everybody seems to think with, you know, uh, global warming or whatever the hell we want to call it, that the water's going to rise in Florida, do you think they would continue building high-rises and making investments on the beach if it happens yes. like that goofy Greta chick? Would- <laughs> the goofy Greta chick. Yes, they would because... Yeah. They may not be aware of you know, research and reports that are further out than whatever their sales targets are. The U.S. military believes in climate change. They have all kinds of contingent- contingencies for it. They know what's going to happen when the waters rise. Well, where I live, we used to be a glacier, so I'm not really worried about any of it. So. And do you know something? The way things are going, it may be a glacier again. Right. <laughs> So, you know, uh, yeah, it's funny that there's almost no glaciers left in Glacier National. By the Park. way, just to tell you this, and then I'm, then we're gonna have to start playing the theme. But uh, down in my courtyard, and maybe I'll take a picture of it or something. It is not snowing in New York, but in my courtyard, we have an inch of snow. They're making a movie in the next couple of days, and they've oh. laid down fake snow, <laughs> and it looks it, it, it's like Christmas down there. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Anyway, hey, listen, first of all, I'm sorry, everybody, that we maybe, if you're watching this in retrospect, it's not running as well as it was. There are some people who just dropped us because they lost us. We lost our, our Internet service for a short time. Fuck you, Fios. Anyway, I want to thank, uh, let me see here, Ray, who's not here right now. I want to thank Patrick. I want to thank uh, Charlie. I want to thank uh, Kevin. I want to thank Jeff. And I, especially in Kuala Lumpur, we want to thank Bree for being here. All of you, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll wave back at you, okay? There we go, folks. There they go. Now, let me uh, hang up on them now. I, I, now they'll hang, I can hang up on them before they hung up on me because I, I, I didn't have an Internet for a while. But... Hopefully, when this plays back, you'll just hear, and then, you know, whatever. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Uh, 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 Jack Bishop is next with the intersection of most of this same station. Uh, I'll be back again uh, tomorrow night, I guess. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, with more of this and a little more of that. Same time. Oh, right, excuse me, Damien's on at 9.30. Let me plug that with the exchange. And then we'll be back again tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. In the meantime, as always, I'm kind of flummoxed because I everything went south tonight. Uh, 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 if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. See you later. Oh, God. <laughs>